Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment of Deadly Premonition. It's finally time to... Oh, I'm sorry. We're gonna do one more run of Chapter 2, but, unlike last time, I promise this one's gonna go much more quickly. We don't have to tour the world this time. I promise. Previously during now, one thing that I think is gonna be worth pointing out, I got a little disturbed that when I used the radio, I found that I could not teleport everywhere like I thought I could. Well, it turns out that, jeez, that uh, I should be able to, but I've kind of, even though side quest continuity has changed, I've still effectively gone back in time as far as the plot is concerned. So I guess I haven't marked those locations on the radio yet in this version. But please forgive me, because the map rotates with me every time. Okay. The first thing that I'm going to do is run over to the end of chapter location, the police station, because I need to mark it on my map again for the radio. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to go take care of what I actually need to. Oh yeah, and just to show off. Look at that, it's a turn signal. And I guess I press left to cancel right instead of pressing right again. That's a little silly. Uh, no need to talk because we've sat through those conversations already. So, I'll just dismiss there. The the whipping camera angle was me accidentally knocking the right analog stick on the way over to the start button. Sorry about that. Anyway, to the sheriff's office. It's not far. And then we can actually go on with our day. Which, I know, I, I really feel the need to keep reiterating this, but I promise this is not going to be what happened in the previous attempt. Oh yeah, and one other thing that I forgot existed. Can I pull in? Okay. One other thing that I forgot existed, by the way. Oh, oh whoops. That's the racetrack. It's the high school. That's not the sheriff's office. I'm being silly. But yes, one thing that I forgot is that I can do this. I can honk the horn. But if cars aren't going to pull over even when I have the sirens on, then I don't know what honking is going to do for anybody. Anyway, let's get out of the car right here. Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? Oh, pressing start actually took me to the menu that time. I wanted to cut that off. Although I guess it did. So let's do this really quick. Let's just mark this on my map. Loading screens galore. We're going to do it. Keep racking up that sweet cash. Right. And I actually parked the car. So I might have to settle for just stealing some different car. No, this was it. This was it. Because it's the only one that's actually a car and not a truck. No, this is a different one. I got a hundred. All right. Cool. Works for me. Maybe that was my car, the one in front of the sign. Who knows? Who cares? But I don't think there'll be nearly as many concerns about gas this time around. Thank goodness. So the first place that I'm going to go to is... Make my first right, and then just follow the road. Because remember that odd job I had to do for Lily? And then when I came back in my second go-around, there was suddenly a second odd job for me to do? So it's, it's little things like that that keep you replaying the chapter. This wasn't possible before, so maybe this time. Speaking of me. That's enough of that conversation with Zack. Watch out for cars. Just follow the road. Easy as you please. If I could warp, I would, but I can't, so I won't. But don't worry, in future chapters, travel is going to be considerably easier. There are certain places that I'm not 100% sure I can warp to, like the lumber yard. I never went in a building in the, in the lumber yard, so I don't know if that'll count or not. But otherwise, this is going to be, I think, pretty smooth sailing. I did a whole bunch of grinding in Chapter 2. Not for money, but, you know, I did a whole bunch of that stuff in Chapter 2, so I wouldn't have to for the remainder of the game. And look at my pulse, it's just going right up. Unbelievable. Now I'm assuming being on... The pulse goes down immediately, like it just doesn't matter. 
I'm assuming that I just follow January away. I can see the gas stations up ahead. There it is. And there's the milk barn. Just go. So one, two, three turns. Super easy. So there's the gas station uh, where I will want to talk to Jack, but I may as well do it on the way home so I can fill up the car in case I need it, which I may not, but whatever. And you can see the icon. There's the gun place, which I don't care about right Whoa! That was on him. You saw it. I can take blame when it's me, and that was not me. So, here's the milk barn. Let's go in. Yeah, I can't skip door openings. Oh well. So there's Keith. There's Lily. Hi. It's hard to get everything out in the countryside like this, hun. But we. Do oh yeah, yeah. This is the regular. I gotta get to the side quest. I can't believe you have to do that whole conversation the entire time. Anyway, talk. Agent York, just the person I wanted to see. Oh, really? It's about our storage room again. Hun, it's a mess. But this time, the mess was caused by Keith. Is there any way I could get you to do another favor for me? <sighs> <laughs> Let's get one thing straight, Lily. Just for the record. I didn't come here to organize your storage room. I actually did. I came to solve a murder case. You understand the difference? Yes, of course. But still, you're a hero who can't ignore civilians in trouble, right? I'm just an FBI agent. Which makes you a hero? Ah, uh... <laughs> oh, she got me. Please, this will be the last time. Would you help me out? I'll give you this key as a reward. Is it related to the investigation? Maybe, maybe not. But I'll tell you once you've finished. Zach, she's a tough negotiator. I guess that comes from dealing with her husband and the twins. Let's do it. Thank you, hon. The storage room is this way. Okay. Here we go. Side quest time. Yep. Here we go. I have to wait for this screen to go away, but that's fine. Okay, here we go. Let's begin. Oof, I really gotta take the long way around for these things. Yeah, see, this is the tricky part. That square that was right there by the first crate, that is a trick. So enjoy me pushing this all the way across the room. Let me just make sure of something. Okay, good. The square's in the corner, so I really can just push this all the way without worrying about overshooting anything. Good for me, right? Also, I didn't even notice, but pushing these things raises my pulse a bit. But okay, that's one thing down. Get the same voices every time. Uh, 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 uh. Anyway, that's done. I have to go a different way around to get this crate now. It's crazy. Crazy? <laughs> oh! <laughs> anyway, this will do it. That 
That music. Agent York, thank you for this. Here's your reward. The key. Key to the closet. And what does this key open? It's the key to the closet in our garage. Closet? Yes, and there's something in there that's really valuable to keep. He says it's the most important thing in his life, second only to his family. I don't really see it in the same light. There are lots of other things in there, too, and you can help yourself. What? Which means this wasn't related to the investigation after all. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to trick you. <laughs> I just couldn't think of another way to get you to help. You're quite a woman, Lily. Only you would be able to get me to clean up that storage room three times, but it's a good thing. Helping people out feels good, after all. And we FBI special agents are all living and breathing heroes. <laughs> right, Zach? Thank you, Agent York. Don't let this stop you from coming by, will you? Keith and I both enjoy your company. Don't worry about that, Lily. I'll be back. That's off-putting. You could just go into our house, into the closet in our garage, and just take whatever the hell. But yeah, I, I was going to mention this. The side quest is called the Legendary Guitar. I kind of assumed that the thing important to Keith was the guitar because that trading card talked about it. But yeah, that's my next goal. Keith's house. So let's load the world. Let's get in the car. There we go. And now... Turn around. Not hit any traffic. Brilliant. Now I'm going to go to Keith's house. And on the way to Keith's house, I will stop by the gas station to hit Jack again. So that's another reason. So this is the reason I'm doing Chapter 2 a third time. Because there's yet another part-time quest and yet another gas station bribe. Let's see who comes out to talk to me. Beautiful. Fill her up. Can't wait till this is over. Anyway, bribe. This time it's 300. Remember, something said, ooh, you, something might happen if we hit him with over $1,000, and we've been doing 100, 200, and now 300, which means next would be 400. 600 plus 400 is 1,000. So let's do 300 bucks. I've been waiting for you, Benjamin. I've got a good one for you today. Don't go around spreading this one. You know Wesley from Panda Bear? Guy's a trading card nut. I've seen cards lying around town, too. Another one when I see you again. <laughs> so, we already knew about cards lying around town, but the guy from Panda Bear... I think Panda Bear might be the gun place? So, there's a good hint for later. Oh, they're just giving me tons of money for getting the bribing done? Okay. Now remember, I'm wearing the suit that doubles my money, so this should be half of what I'm getting here, but this is a ton of money. Huh. I guess the game's rewarding me a little bit in advance, because this is not the end of his quest. I need to do one more bribe of 400 bucks. Now let me see where Keith's house is in relation to me, and then we can wrap up the chapter for super duper real I mean it. There's Keith's house. Look at this. See, I told you we're almost done. This is far quicker than the last time. I promise. I'll get excited when I see... I see it. Keith's house right on the map. Would you look at that? Oops. Get out of the car. Okay. Ah, I parked on the other side of the street. Here's Keith's house. Well, there's the window. I don't care about that so much. Looks like I went around the long way. I took the back. Okay, so garage, which is inexplicably opened, even if the inner door is locked. But, wait, what's this? Oh, a bar for the toolbox? I guess I'll put it in the toolbox, whatever. It's a melee weapon that I don't think I'm going to need because I have an infinite wrench, which took me some effort to get. That stutter is legendary. Like, oh, do you have a bad PC? No, I'm using a PS3 disc and a PS3. And it's a brand new disc. I mean, it's old, but I unsealed it to play this game. 
So here's the closet. Locked. What's inside? I don't know. But I bet I do know. So this is Keith's most important possession. Second only to his family. Makes sense, I guess. Greco charm. Looks like quite a sturdy instrument. I hope Keith won't mind me using this in a more violent way. Oof. That's me His wife just sold that out to me? Take Keith's prized possession and bash people with it? But again, to be fair, to be fair, something I think a trading card mentioned this is an imitation, but that's ice cold. Also, wrong menu. What I should have done was this. Oh, no, this is infinite use. No way. Maybe better for melee combat? I don't know, because I, I kind of like how fast I swing the wrench. Obviously, it doesn't have the reach, but still. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the part you've all been waiting for. Sheriff's Department. Cash money's, baby. Alright, now I know you're not gonna believe me, but we are now super duper done with chapter two. I know, I know, I was shocked as well, but we really did it. Resume. Previously I could skip the previously. We know what happened. We've already watched the cutscene. Alright, no, we're good. Get moving. The hospital... All right, so I remember I'm supposed to drive to the hospital with George, but I have a couple of things I want to do. I know, I know. So, first things first. Radio. Now watch this. Oh. Hang on just one second. Get back here, idiot. Agent Morgan, why do you want to go back in there? If you don't intend to come with us, then we'll go on ahead. Okay, go on ahead. I can't help feeling of us lame behind. I'll catch up with you later. If that's what you want to do, then do as you wish, but think about it. The person in command is requesting you to come with him to the hospital. Which means you are showing a severe lack of teamwork. I'm sorry. I'm sure he knows what he's doing, George. He doesn't even know his way around yet. Just let him do his thing. Agent York, the hospital's only open from 9 to 21 o'clock, which is, uh, 9 p.m., so 9 to 9. No one is allowed inside after those hours. Don't mess around. Don't be a jackass like you were for Chapter 2. But that's okay. Now I can use the radio and watch this. Oh, baby! It's not the biggest list in the world, but it's pretty good. And as you can see, here's the hospital. I can just warp there, which is pretty funny. I can beat them to the place. But first... Oh my god, the list is big! So, Heaven and Hell gas station. I'm just gonna go now. I guess I better get in the car for this to make sense. According to George, it's down the road by the lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one disadvantage of the radio stuff is I might miss... Ah, I don't want to talk to her. Is I might miss, um... Conversations, like the long driving down the road conversations, but at the same time, it'll make the gameplay considerably more efficient. Gina, I'm sorry. You're, you're nice, but I've already completed your side quest. I want to talk to your vulgar and frankly annoying husband. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the last time, the last bribe. For Hundo, he wants to ruin the FBI. <laughs> All 
<laughs> Benjamin, today's a big day. I'm one lucky fella now, ain't I? Thanks to this monkey in a suit, I got ten of you now. Makes working for an honest dollar look pretty bad now, don't it? With this green, I'm gonna get me a new muffler. I better get over to the generals and look for one. Reminds me, man, that general. He was going on about some high-fly car that just came in. Said it was the car that FB idiot drove into town with. Must be a sweet sound and ride, though. I bet with a little tuning, it would run pretty smooth. Ah, what do I care? It ain't my thing. Yeah, there's my big hint. And it's not even necessarily a hint. I think it might actually open possibility Zach, I don't for me. Think I understood what he was talking about. My car is at the general's junkyard. Let's get over there and see if we can get it repaired. I don't care what it's going to cost. That car has sentimental value. I really genuinely like that we can do side quests to catch up with our car that we trashed in the beginning of the game. That's very amusing to me. Zach, anyway, is there something here that you want to check out? No, there, there as a matter of fact, isn't. They told us to be there at 21 o'clock. Yeah, don't worry. This radio is a freaking lifesaver. Watch as I skip half the chapter by just going there. Oh, that's the sheriff. The hospital. Boom, done. I did a whole lot of driving. A whole lot of driving, but would you look at how it paid off? Agent Morgan, have you no respect for rules and protocol? We were waiting for you, and now you try to go in by yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not fair. I don't like inconsiderate people who think that they're above the rules, and I'm sure I've made this point clear by now. Calm down, George. He probably just got lost on his way here and rushed in. Right, Agent Mark? Let's go inside, then. George is so done with me, and I actually totally get it. Emily actually seems overly forgiving. Hello, Sheriff. Freckly Fiona. Hey, I've seen your trading card. Hospital receptionist. Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. A computer room? In a hospital? Nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. But how did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. Hmm. Huh. Good catch. Besides, that scar on your face is the biggest rumor in town. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread. Even in the countryside. What's that you're reading, if I may ask? Liar's House? You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S., a small traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime. The murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous, evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all. Don't worry. Books are written to entertain, and it's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent York. Anyway, that was a whole lot just for us to go to the computer room. Uh, do I get a sense of that? Uh, yes I do, as a matter of fact. So I could just go directly behind me and curve to the right. So, huh? Oh, 
Okay, that was easy. We couldn't find him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? <laughs> There's a message on the computer. That positioning. That card key already set in place. The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zach, let's take him up on his challenge. You can do this, right? I, I really enjoy that she's like, he likes games. What do you mean? In front of this giant chess poster. But yeah, king passes a rook and meets bishop. Knight takes a pawn to the queen. This actually is a simple puzzle. You don't need to know how to play chess. The only thing that can make this daunting is if you don't know anything about chess because you need to know what the pieces are. So, king passes a rook and meets bishop. Knight takes a pawn to the queen. Checkmate, I guess. Even though there are only white pieces. The doctor awaits below with the deceased. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. More games. I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right now. No need, George. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This is not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. But that's not a riddle. Dr. Usha is below with the deceased. With Anna. Yeah, he's like, where do you, like, that's, that's directly a message telling us. <laughs> Simple. Simple. Yeah, like, I don't even know how anybody interpreted that as a riddle. Then it's time to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. Like, he's uh, in the morgue area uh, with the deceased. Like, what do you want? <laughs> what was George getting all excited about? Alright, anyway. So now... By the way, that card key I got is one of those keys where if I save and quit and then reload the file, I might lose it. So... I have to complete the chapter now, in one go. Anyway... Where is the place I need to go to? Ugh, pain in the ass. Alright. Turn around. Go this way. Go through. I guess it's not as long as I'd feared. Now, it is directly below me, but where are the stairs? Yeah, this might not be working out. Oh, no, it is. I gave up at the uh, almost last possible second, just a little early. I apologize for doubting you, deadly premonition. Yeah, look at that. There we go. The doctor lies below. Whoa. The doctor lies below with the deceased. And here we are. I'm just going to violently throw the the morgue door open. Oh, it's a phone. It's a vending machine. Alright. 